This video is going to be a look at some Rashad Bateman film from 2023 with an eye towards the 2024 NFL Draft, one where the Ravens front office has to address some, some well-defined needs or positions uh, that are not as strong as we would like them to be once the 2024 regular season begins. What is Rashad Bateman? Uh, he's a wide receiver that's played three years with the Ravens and during that time only produced 93 catches, almost 1,200 yards, four touchdowns after being selected in the first round of 2021 draft. Injuries, opportunities, perhaps scheme, uh, route design has influenced some of those numbers. He did play in a, a system in his rookie year that was less conducive to a wide receiver garnering a huge stats. Is he a top flight receiver on a Super Bowl team? I'm quite sure I know what the answer would be for most people, but but the reality is the Ravens did come within one win of reaching the Super Bowl in 2023. There was a lot of factors involved, though. A, a lot more aspects of the game that were far more impactful than Bateman from week one through the AFC title game playoff loss to the Chiefs. Is he a deep threat? Is he a possession receiver? Is he even reliable for this team long term? I'm going to do, I'm going to approach those questions this way, almost in a backwards manner. Let's imagine for a moment how simple the draft would be. From a, from a Ravens perspective, how simple it would be if Bateman had just come off a, even just a 65 catch, 800 yard, five touchdown season. Even those numbers would be enough, I think, to push the need for wide receiver beyond pick 60, pick 30 and 62. Let's be honest. When that first round pick at 30 comes up, it's financially smart to take a receiver. In this day and age, I forget who it was in the mock draft video that I put out Sunday night. Great comment said having the ability to control that fifth year at that wide receiver position is is crucial. And, and, I, and I totally agree. If Bateman had been able to produce twice as much statistically in 2023, and that, that sounds kind of crazy. But if he'd been able to give us 65 catches, five touchdowns, how much more focused could the front office be? during this draft and free agency even, where we're obviously limited, but how much more focused could the front office be on other positions, namely tackle, corner, and, and outside linebacker D-end or edge, as most people refer to it. Having that added wide receiver need, in my opinion, along with those three positions, almost stress, stresses the front office too thin. Even though at this point, we, we're sitting in a good position having four picks in the top 113, and then that fifth pick at 130, which is our own selection, that is a great setup to improve the roster. Having that added need of wide receiver, I think almost puts too much pressure on the front office to be perfect in this draft in some ways. And, and even though the, the depth, because even though the, the depth at tackle and corner is impressive, the decisions to make at 30 and 62 are incredibly important. It's not just what which players to select. It's what position to address with each of those picks and balancing that with who might be available with our next choice. Bateman's given us moments or glimpses of the talent that caused him to be taken in the first round in 2021. It just hasn't been enough. I do think he could have been given more opportunities. Um, if, if the offense had been focused on him more often. But first of all, like sh should, they, should they have been? I mean, Zay Flowers did put up 77 catches on 108 targets. So that's a 71% catch percentage. Among that was 41 first downs. So even though he only averaged 11 yards per catch, you have a significant number of first downs there. Uh, and, and by the way, 11 yards per catch is, is about the same as what Bateman gave us. Am I saying that Flowers sh should get more or, or less targets than he already got? I mean, not really. From, from a Bateman perspective, I can understand why some people would say he should have gotten more targets this past year. And if you look at the stats, just from a data standpoint, you could do this if you wish. And I'm not saying that I agree with this. I just want to present it to you after looking at the data. If you doubled Bateman's targets and you cut Flowers' targets in half, you would have comparable numbers to what we have right now, except the opposite. If, if Bateman had 112 targets 
and 64 catches, he'd have far less than 800 yards, first of all. He would have 40 first downs if we just extrapolated or doubled it. If you cut Flowers' targets in half, he'd be at 39 catches and 20 first downs on 54 targets, which is two less targets than Bateman. The had in all of 2023 regular season. The numbers are very similar. The difference to me would be a couple of things. The catch percentage, far superior in Flowers' case, and the ability to make people miss after the catch. It's just different. It's just vastly different in Flowers' case. Maybe some of that is the type of route being run or or the play design. But over the course of the 17 games, and Bateman didn't play in all of them. He did play in Week 18. He missed Week 4 against the Browns. Over the course of the 17 games, you can see clear differences between them. So even though the data lines up double Bateman's targets, cut Flowers in half, and and things would look similar, I don't think it's that simple. And and besides, I'm not saying that's what I want, because what we had already is a winning formula. Uh, The Ravens' formula worked over 2023. Think of it this way. Even in the AFC title game, on a day when we played horrible offensively and, and didn't wake up defensively until the second quarter, even on a day like that, we had the ball in position to be right there with the Chiefs when they didn't turn the football over, and they, being the Chiefs, played brilliant on defense. If we get any plays, opportunities that Bateman takes advantage of at some point, I think we have to be look back at the game as one that we clearly should have won for how poorly we played overall compared to the quality of play that the Chiefs put up. to let some of his plays flow through here from 2023. He'll be spot shadowed uh, pre-snap. I'm not really going to talk about the plays necessarily. I'm going to summarize some of them, and you're welcome to refer to them as you wish in the comment section. Some of them is end zone angles, so you'll be able to see where Lamar kind of looks at first because a lot of the discussion with Bateman is, is the read. You know, Is he on the read side? Is he on the away side? And it's absolutely true that there's a lot of times when he's on the, on the away side. And look, I'm all for Zay Flowers getting five, six, seven targets a game. Somewhere between 95 and 110, 115 targets for Flowers. That sounds about right. From a Bateman perspective, the last eight regular season games of 2023, he did play week week 18 against the Steelers. He did play 27 snaps. Didn't get a target, which is unreal if you ask me, given the situation. But So I'm taking that game out. From week 9 against the Seahawks up through week 17, Bateman had 36 targets. So that's an average of 4.5 targets per game over 8-game stretch. I would think that his talent warrants 4 to 5 targets a game, closer to 5. Works out to about 85 opportunities over the course of a 17-game season. From a statistical standpoint, I'd like to see more. But breaking this down from his highest usage stretch last eight games played of 2023 except for that week 18 game against the Steelers even that only works out to about 85 or 90 targets over the course of a 17 game season it's just hard to handle that on an offense where you've got so many talented guys who who want and deserve chances to make plays Mark Andrews Isaiah Likely Zay Flowers Keaton Mitchell and whenever Keaton Mitchell returns and now by the way Derrick Henry I would still say that flowers should be used a little bit less on quick screens or jet sweeps, but they were productive at times. We had a touchdown call back against the Bengals at home, I think week 11. Uh, they, were, they were productive at times, and it really threatens the defense from a horizontal standpoint. Uh, and, and reality is there's, there was opportunities there for Bateman to make plays that he didn't take advantage of. The big touchdown drop on the road against the Steelers in week five. I think Mark Andrews drops a touchdown on the very next play. But for Bateman, that was tough to watch. A, 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 a talented young player fail in that moment against a divisional opponent. Opponent He had one clean in the end zone. And you could tell by his reaction it was tough for him to stomach. There's some other opportunities, missed throws, deep throws particularly down the right, right sideline. It's been well documented. At least one fantastic play by a defensive back to deny him a, a big catch, a CTB for the Bengals in Baltimore in Week 11. One that was ruled a catch and then overturned on the field. I think the opening play of the game against the Dolphins in Week 17. And, and you know, as I referred to earlier, there's some overthrows there, as well as plays where Lamar is looking somewhere else that's by design. That's just football. 
we don't know the call. We, and is it Lamar choosing to go away from Bateman consistently? I don't. I just don't. I don't think that's the case. We have no idea what Lamar is told in his helmet. What kinds of of language Todd Munkin is using to tell him what to look for? Hey, on on this particular snap, Lamar, if if the nickel is inside of number two pre snap, we're probably getting two read or whatever the coverage is. So let's look for the vertical up the sideline. Lamar and Munkin and the other coaches on the headset are the only ones that know the pre snap reads. Only ones in terms of the coverage we're anticipating versus what actually happened. Can we see times where Lamar looks to Bateman and then moves off that read? Sometimes. It's occasional. But I, I actually like to explain it this way in terms of his targets in 2023. Him and OBJ combined are 120 yards, 20 targets in 2023. To me, that element has gone unmentioned. They were oftentimes splitting snaps at X. Um, now, I, I do think there's three or four times where Lamar is making a throw to OBJ as the backside X that he may not have made if Bateman was the guy on the field. Do I suspect that's true more than those three or four times across the season? No, I don't think it's a big factor. But in terms of overall targets, if OBJ or Bateman had just not been on the team last season, the other one would have received more snaps and more opportunities. I think that's it seems obvious to me. But it was smart planning from the front office to double up with those two. Since both of them had health concerns, if, if one of them went down for an extended period of time, which you'd have to say there was a chance of that occurring, the other could be relied upon more, doubling up. Where you have one, you have none. Where you have two, you have one. It's an old saying I think they use in the military. Uh, having quality depth is a good thing. I'm glad we had OBJ for that reason. If it was possible this year for him to return on a really low salary structure, that wouldn't bother me. But um, that's not going to happen, number one. And number two, last uh, the unfortunate thing from a Bateman standpoint is that season last year, his third, is the one that is essentially going to decide whether the Ravens extend him prior to 2024. So holding OBJ here doesn't make sense from a, the standpoint of – limiting Bateman's expectation and responsibility. And I guess some people could say the same thing applies to last year. Now, moving forward to talk about the, the draft and, and young players that are available, is, is Bateman, without OBJ, getting more snaps and more opportunities? Is he going to be better than a young rookie we draft at 30 or 62? Uh, maybe maybe we draft two rookies. It wouldn't surprise me. We've got Flowers, Bateman, and Aguilar returning. I think Tylen Wallace, I believe that's it. From a salary cap perspective, um, I understand if people say they want to take a receiver at 30. Because at, at this point, and the, and the reality is I've kind of come to the conclusion, in some ways Bateman now is, is more of a, a possession guy, someone who works the middle of the – maybe he's more of a possession guy, someone that works the middle of the field, intermediate routes – along the sideline because we've got a lot of examples i'm showing them here of him getting open in those areas of the field we all wanted more of the of the deep throws to him to be completed was it bateman's fault was it lamar's fault was it the pass protection breaking down the route design whatever the point is we didn't convert him and i think that there's something to be said there in terms of bateman being more efficient in other areas of the field. Reality, does Lamar need to be more accurate on some of the throws? Absolutely, he does. And I'm not going to shy away from saying that. I understand that certain Ravens fans may not like that. I apologize that it bothers you so much, but that's the reality. There are times where Lamar needs to be more accurate on those longer throws. We can't miss out on so many one-on-ones. We have to put them in a position where the receiver can make a play on the ball. But having said that, Look, there's some spectacular throws that Lamar has made deep in 2023. The one along the right sideline, I think against the Dolphins to OBJ, that was ridiculous. Lamar was, I think, sliding to his right and put the ball in the only spot where OBJ could catch it. On the move, tucked right in the right sideline. What we're looking for is consistency in that deep attack. And for me right now, even though I really like Rashad Bateman, and I think it's obvious that he gets open often. That's been discussed by a lot of people. 
as the deep threat, the guy consistently making plays down the field, it just hasn't happened. It just has not. Like I said, there's times where it's the O-line's fault, the Bateman's fault, Lamar's fault, whatever. Um, additional to that, I thought he looked a little less explosive. His strides looked a little longer and maybe a, a, little, a little less sudden is the word in 2023 than even 2022 before he went out for the year in 2021. There didn't seem to be that, that suddenness that we saw. Like, for example, the slant for a touchdown against the Dolphins at home in 2023, 2022, excuse me. Or the one that really, I think, opened my eyes a little bit was on the road, week three, 2022, against the Patriots. It's a comeback route along the left sideline. The explosion that he had to cut back into the field and gain another 12 or 14 yards, we haven't seen that that often. I didn't think it was there in 2023 consistently. Feel free to let me know if you if you disagree in the comment section. I'm just not remembering it now, and I've cut up probably 40 or 50 Bateman plays for this video in the last week. I do think that, as I said, his usage increased over the last eight games that he played in in 2023, except for that Steelers game. But even when he got 36 targets in those last eight games, you know how many catches he had on those 36 targets? 18. Unless I did my math wrong. I don't think the issue here is trying to decide whether to extend him before the season or not. Um, even though I root for him and wish that there was more evidence from 2023 to say that they will, I just don't think they will. I'm rooting, rooting for him. I think he can contribute more than he has. If he's got more opportunities and better health, then I think he can absolutely put up 50, 60, 65 catches in 2024 to help push this offense over the top. There's just so many guys who are going to get the football, number one. Number two, this is a true spread offense, I think, from Munkin. And the coaching staff on one level controls the opportunities. The offensive staff, I should say. They control the opportunities. There's so much need for this team in the draft that having wide receiver on top of that need is, is very unfortunate. I don't know about you. I wish we didn't have that need. I wish there was more of these plays that I'm showing you here to justify going ahead and extending him and not having to deal with wide receiver in this draft until – pick 113 or pick 130 so that the earlier picks, the first three or four, could be focused on other positions of need uh, that is going to really determine this team's fate in 2024. The one thing I do have to say about Bateman is, is you can't find a 16-game stretch for him statistically that adds up to 75 or 80 catches and 1,000 yards and six or eight touchdowns. You, you just really can't. And that's unfortunate to say, I'll be honest with you, because I, I really do think there's a lot of talent there. Um, I've said this now the third time. I'm rooting for him. I wish that we would find super amount of production and impactful plays somehow in 2024. He's had two 100-yard games in three years. It sounds like I'm tearing him down, and I actually don't even enjoy quoting these stats, but it's, it's the real numbers, so I have to be true to what's real. His most impactful stretch, I guess, was probably late 2021. In the, in the final five games of the season, 2021, I think Lamar played one of those games and Huntley played the other four. Or maybe Huntley played in all of them, I'm not sure. He had 29 targets, 21 catches, two games of, of seven catches. He's only had two 100-yard games. One of them was during that stretch I just referred to, on the road against the Browns, and his other was the 100-yard game against the Dolphins in Week 2 of 2022. Um, and that one includes a 75-yard catch along the left sideline. That was probably the most explosive play that we've seen. Can, can we see more of that guy who can catch and gain yards after the reception? As I've said before, some of, some of it is route design. Some of it is just jukes and Flowers has more than him. Some of it is athletic ability. Maybe health is related to it. I think he's more reliable on intermediate routes. And if we're looking at contested catch guys or guys who can attack down the field outside the bottom of the numbers, at this point we can't say that he's been 
reliable. We can't show film that, that he's reliable there in making that catch or that connection with Lamar. I do hope he gets 70-plus catches, six touchdowns or more this season um, because it'll, be, it'll project well for him. <laughs> He'll be able to sign a bigger contract somewhere else. There'll be a market for him that would open up his market, but selfishly, that would make the Ravens team better in 2023 if he's able to add 70 catches six touchdowns or more maybe 800 900 yards something like that but I would be remiss to talk about if I didn't talk about the projected cap hit that he would have in 2025 if they extended him I think it's 14 million dollars or maybe it's 13.8 somewhere around there 13.8 14.2 is sticking in my head his cap hit this year coming up is 4 million there's, wide receive, there's just wide receivers in the draft this year and every year who can, who will be far cheaper but more explosive down the field. It's just reality. More, maybe even the most important part, on the field more consistently over the course of their rookie contract. I, I will hope that my video and what I've recorded here gets played back by someone um, less than a year from now after he's gone off for 70 906 uh, to say how wrong I was, I would welcome that. I do think that it's possible. Look at Patrick Queen. There's an example of a player not getting extended and then having a, having a great four season. You, you can even find wide receiver situation. Nico Collins, wide receiver who in his first two years didn't produce nearly, didn't have the impact that was expected. And then C.J. Stroud showing up also helps. 80 catches, four touchdowns in his first two seasons with Houston, and then explodes, matches that 80 catches in his third year in Texas, in Houston, that is. So it's possible. It is possible for a wide receiver to increase their production exponentially. But with Andrews, Flowers, likely, and now Derrick Henry added to the mix, I just don't see how Bateman gets that many targets, nor any rookie wide receiver that we were to bring in. I fully expect Henry to have multiple weeks of getting 15, 18 carries a game. Do I think he's going to average 18, 20 carries a game for the season? No, I do not. But I would say there's going to be at least 12 to 13 games next year where Henry gets in that 15 to 18 carries a game range, far exceeding what we normally allot to our running backs, Gus Edwards, Justice Hill, even J.K. Dobbins when he was healthy. It's, it's tough for me, and it's, it's tough for me to say it, but I have to, that a $14 million extension for 2025, I just don't see that being the route that the Ravens go, even though personally I will root and hope for Bateman to prove the Ravens and myself wrong with his play in 2024 so that it ends up looking like uh, the Ravens should have signed him. Appreciate you guys' time, man. If you enjoyed the video, if you think other Ravens fans would enjoy the video, then please consider grabbing a link to it, sharing it out on social media to help the content get more reach. If you're looking for more draft a film study insight, I do offer that on my Patreon. I intentionally kind of wait till the end to do any kind of uh, publicity about that. Feel uh, Consider joining my Patreon where I share a considerable amount of draft video on a weekly basis. And if you haven't done so already, consider following me on Twitter. Appreciate you guys' time.